All right, strap in everyone. Today we are going deep into some seriously mind-bending territory. Oh, yeah. The work of Dr. William Tiller. Mm -hmm. Now, he was a Stanford professor. Yes. Who dedicated his career to the intersection of consciousness and physics. Yeah. You might be thinking Stanford professor of physics right. sounds a little dry. A little bit. But trust me, this is anything it's but. It's juicy stuff. This is juicy stuff, exactly. Yeah. So what's so fascinating about Dr. Tiller is he started as a world-renowned material scientist. Uh -huh. I mean, this wasn't some fringe researcher. Right. This guy was deeply entrenched in traditional science. That's exactly. But then he started asking a question mm -hmm. that would change the trajectory of his entire career. Okay. Can human intention actually influence the physical world? It's a big question. It is a big question. Yeah. And he wasn't just speculating. Right. He designed rigorous experiments to put this question to the test. I mean, the guy was seeing statistically significant changes in things like the pH of water. Uh-huh. Just from focused human intention. It's pretty amazing. He even saw it affecting the growth weight of fruit flies. Like speeding up human growth. Yeah. Basically what he observed happening. Yeah. It really makes you wonder about the untapped potential of human consciousness. Absolutely. To explore this further, Tiller created something called Intention Imprinted Electrical Devices. Okay. Or IIEDs for short. IIEDs. These were essentially devices designed to store and transmit human intention. So he's got these intention devices, mm. and then he designs a series of experiments to see what they can do. Yes. What were some of the effects he was looking for? He focused on four specific effects. Okay. Increasing and decreasing the pH of water. Okay. Influencing the activity of a specific liver enzyme. Okay. And increasing the ratio of ATP to ADP in fruit fly larvae. Okay, hold on. ATP, yeah. ADP. Right. That sounds a little technical. Can you break that down for us a little bit? You got it. Go. Oh. Think of ATP as the energy currency of cells. Okay. So by increasing the ratio of ATP to ADP, mm. he was essentially boosting the energy levels within these fruit flies, uh -huh. which is pretty remarkable. That is remarkable. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. So he's looking at these four very specific effects. Yes. Using his intention devices. Correct. What kind of results did he see? The results were actually pretty astonishing. Oh, yeah. For instance, mm -hmm. he managed to shift the pH of water. Okay. By an entire pH unit in both directions. Wow. That's significant change. That is a significant change. He also observed a 30% increase in the activity of that liver enzyme. Okay. And with the fruit flies. Yeah. Well, their ADP to ADP ratio increased by 15%. Okay. And their development time to adulthood decreased by 25%. Wait, so he was speeding up their growth? Essentially, yeah. That's wild. It is pretty wild. So what was going on with these intention devices? Right. And how are they being used? That's where things get really interesting. Okay. These intentions were very specific to each experiment uh -huh. and imprinted onto the devices using a deep meditative state. Meditation intention. Mm -hmm. Changing the pH of water. Yeah. Okay, we're definitely heading into uncharted territory here. For sure. I read that Dr. Tiller developed an entirely new model of reality. He did. To explain how this was even possible. It's pretty complex stuff. Can you tell us a bit about that? Absolutely. Mm. Tiller proposed that there are actually two realms of reality okay. coexisting. Two realms of reality, huh? Yeah. Okay, I'm intrigued. Okay. And I'm a little lost. Okay. Can you break that down a bit further for me? Of course. Hey. Right. D space is our everyday world. Okay. The familiar realm of matter and energy huh? governed by the laws of physics as we know them. Okay. It's where we experience the physical world through our senses. So like we're here in D space right now. Exactly. Okay. Our space, on the other hand, is more subtle. Okay. It's a hidden realm of frequencies uh -huh. where information can travel faster than the speed of light. Oh, wow. And it's deeply intertwined with human consciousness. So while we're here in D space, mm -hmm. stuck in traffic, yeah. grabbing a coffee, right. there's this whole other dimension of reality uh -huh. Uh -huh. operating at a completely different level. Precisely. Wow. And according to Tiller, okay. human consciousness, uh -huh. particularly in heightened states like deep meditation, okay. can interact with our space okay. and through that interaction actually influence D space. So our minds yes. are sending ripples. It's a good way to think about it. Through this ocean of frequencies yeah and those ripples mm -hmm. eventually manifest yes as changes in our physical reality exactly okay i'm starting to see how this connects to the intention devices mm. and the results he was seeing 
So how do these devices fit into this whole D space, R space picture? Tiller believed that these IIDs, okay. when imprinted with specific intentions, uh -huh. could somehow bridge the gap between these two realms of reality. Oh, he even proposed the existence of these hypothetical particles called deltrons. Deltrons. To explain how this bridge might work. So we've got two realms of reality, yeah. faster than light information transfer, yeah. and these deltron particles zipping between them. Right. That's a lot to take in. It's mind boggling. It really is. But what's even more fascinating okay. is that Tiller's research showed uh -huh. that the very spaces okay. where these intention imprinted devices were used okay. began to exhibit some seriously strange physical properties. Wait, so these rooms became permanently weird? You could say that. What kind of weird are we talking about? Well, for one thing, Correct. they found unusual temperature fluctuations. Good. But get this. They even detected evidence of magnetic monopoles in these spaces. Hold on. Magnetic monopoles? Yeah. Aren't those like the unicorns of physics? They're very rare. I thought they were purely theoretical. In our everyday reality, magnets always have a north and south pole. Right. But in these conditioned spaces, as Tiller called them, okay. there were signs of these single pole magnets. Wow. Which shouldn't exist according to conventional physics. So these rooms weren't just holding on to the intention. It seems that way. They were somehow altering the very laws of physics within them. That's what Tiller's findings seem to suggest. That's incredible. It is pretty incredible. But how is that even possible? That's the big question. It is a big question. Tiller believed that human intention, mm -hmm. particularly when focused through deep meditation, okay. could actually alter the fabric of reality itself. So we're not just talking about influencing events. Right. We're talking about potentially changing the structure of space and time. Exactly. Wow. It's heavy stuff. It is heavy stuff. Yeah. We need a moment to process this. Yeah, it's like realizing there's this whole control panel to reality we never even knew existed. Mm -hmm. And just like those astronauts we were talking about, we need specialized training yeah. and equipment. Uh -huh. In this case, our training is inner work. Okay. Practices like meditation to refine our intention and access those deeper levels. So it's not just about thinking really hard about what we want. No, not at all. It's about cultivating a specific state of being. Exactly. Okay. Tiller emphasized that it's about achieving a high degree of coherence and inner alignment. Oh. Imagine tuning a radio to pick up a specific frequency. Yeah. That's kind of what we're doing with our consciousness when we meditate deeply. Uh-huh. We're aligning ourselves with the subtler frequencies of our space. Okay. Which allows us to influence the denser energies of D space. So this is where those deltrons might come in. Exactly. Okay. Those little particles acting as a bridge between these two realms. Okay, I think I'm starting to wrap my head around that. Yeah. But I have to admit, it still sounds a little out there. I get it. Did Tiller do any experiments to test these conditioned spaces? He did? Like, did they actually have any practical applications? Yes. Actually, one of his most fascinating studies involved long-distance healing. Long-distance healing. He had a group of experienced meditators in California what? focus on sending healing intentions to a group of people with autism in Missouri. Hold on. They were trying to heal people from across the country just with their intentions. That was the idea. Did it actually work? The results were pretty remarkable. Uh After eight months of sending these focused intentions, the group in Missouri showed significant reductions in depression and anxiety. Wow. Their parents even reported improvements in their own well-being. Really? It seems those good vibes can travel a long way. <sighs> That's pretty incredible. It is. Sending good vibes across state lines and seeing a measurable effect. And he didn't stop there. He replicated this long-distance experiment with a water sample in Germany. Oh, wow. Same group of meditators in California, this time focusing on increasing the pH of this water sample across the Atlantic. So they were trying to change the properties of water in another country. Uh-huh. Just with their thoughts. Pretty much. And what happened? You guessed it. After eight months, that water sample in Germany showed a significant and sustained increase in pH. Really? It matched the intentions sent from California perfectly. So if they changed water in Germany just by thinking about it in California, mm -hmm. does that mean distance doesn't matter? That's what it seems to suggest. For intention, what kind of implications does that have? The implications are huge. This is starting to feel like a sci-fi movie. It kind of is. Okay, let's talk about healing specifically. Okay. How did Tiller think we could use this knowledge <laughs> to actually help people? 
He envisioned a future where we could create healing spaces, oh, okay. hospitals, therapy rooms, maybe even our own homes, intentionally conditioned to enhance well-being. So you're saying the very environment could be designed to support healing. Exactly. Like walking into a room yeah. that's designed to boost your immune system. Yeah. Or calm your anxiety. Right. Mm -hmm. And he also believed we could use intention to make other healing methods even more effective. Okay. Like medication or acupuncture. Oh, wow. Imagine taking a pill intentionally charged to boost its effects uh -huh. or receiving acupuncture in a room designed to amplify the flow of energy in your body. So we're talking about a whole new level of holistic healing. We are. Where intention and the environment are just as important as traditional treatments. It's a whole new paradigm. That's a lot to wrap your head around. It is. What stands out to you the most about all of this? I think what fascinates me most is this idea that we're not just passive recipients of whatever life throws at us. Yeah. You know, we actually have the potential to be active participants in shaping our reality and our well-being. I love that. It's empowering. It is empowering. Yeah. But I have to wonder if our intentions are so powerful. Mm -hmm. Does that mean our negative thoughts and emotions also have the power to shape things? That's a great question. Like if we're constantly worrying or feeling stressed, mm -hmm. could that be negatively impacting our reality? It's definitely something to consider. Yeah. Tiller acknowledged that negative intentions can indeed have an impact. Okay. But he emphasized that they're generally weaker and less coherent than positive intentions. So it's like this constant tug of war. Yeah, you could see it that way. Between positive and negative energies. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. And thankfully, love and compassion tend to have the upper hand. It seems that way. Okay, good to know. Tiller believed that by cultivating love, compassion, and that sense of interconnectedness, mm -hmm. we amplify our positive influence on the world. It's not just about meditating on our own personal desires. Right. It's about aligning our intentions with the greater good. Exactly. Okay. Tiller believed that's the key to a more harmonious and fulfilling reality. Shifting from self-interest to collective well-being. So we're not just these isolated individuals. No, we're not. We're all part of this interconnected web of consciousness. We are all connected. And our thoughts and emotions are constantly shaping the world around us. All the time, whether we realize it or not. Wow. That's the big picture that Tiller's research points to. Okay. We're all co-creators of reality. Whether we realize it or not. Exactly. That's incredible. It's a pretty profound concept. And maybe even a little scary. It can be a bit daunting. Yeah, I'm really starting to feel the weight of that responsibility. I understand. If we're all connected in this way, uh -huh. what can we do to make sure we're using our intentions for good? That's the million dollar question. It really is. Tiller stressed the importance of self-awareness and inner work. Okay. We believe that the more we understand ourselves, mm -hmm. our motivations, our unconscious patterns, okay. the more we can consciously choose to align our intentions with our highest values. So before we try to change the world, mm -hmm. we need to understand our own minds and hearts. It all starts within. Okay, where do we even begin with all of that? It's a journey, but one worth taking. Absolutely. And Tiller believed that our emotions play a huge role in this. Okay. He saw them as a powerful source of energy. Uh-huh. The more we learn to manage and direct our emotions, okay. the more we can influence reality. So we need to become masters of our own inner world. In a sense, yes. That sounds like a lifelong pursuit. It is a lifelong journey. Yeah. But it's also incredibly empowering. Okay. Tiller believed that the more we evolve as individuals, mm -hmm. the more we contribute to the evolution of humanity as a whole. So our individual growth and intentions can create a ripple effect of positive change. Precisely. Okay. And that positive change is amplified when we come together with shared intentions. Hmm. Imagine what could happen if we all focused our collective intention on creating a more peaceful, just, and sustainable world. Wow, that's an inspiring vision. But it also feels a little daunting. I understand. Where do we even begin to tap into that kind of collective power? Well, the good news is okay. we can start right here, right now. Okay. Every time we choose a loving thought over a fearful one, uh -huh. every time we act with kindness instead of judgment, mm. every time we strive to be the best versions of ourselves, yeah. we're contributing to that positive shift. It's about those small everyday choices. Exactly. Those seemingly insignificant moments that actually add up to something much greater. 
Precisely, as Tiller said. Yep. The means we use to achieve our goals in life actually determine the ends we must eventually live with. Mm -hmm. So let's choose wisely. I love that quote. It's a good one. And I think it's a perfect reminder as we wrap up this part of our deep dive. It's amazing to think that even the smallest acts of kindness and love can have a ripple effect on the world around us. It really is. And that we're not just shaping our own reality, <laughs> but contributing to something much larger. It puts things into perspective. Yeah, it really does. It makes you realize the power we each hold. Mm -hmm. But it's not about becoming some kind of superhero with magical powers. Right. You know, it's about recognizing our interconnectedness uh -huh. and choosing to act in ways that align with our highest values. So it's not about like meditating to manifest a new car right. or win the lottery. Exactly. It's about cultivating this deeper awareness of ourselves. Mm hmm and our impact on the world. Precisely. You know, it's funny. When I first okay. heard we were diving into the work of a Stanford physics professor. Okay. I was expecting something very technical. Right. And maybe a little dry. Yeah. But this yeah. conversation has been anything but. It's been pretty mind-blowing. It's been truly mind-expanding. Yeah. It's a testament to Dr. Tiller's ability to bridge the gap between rigorous scientific inquiry uh -huh. and profound spiritual insights. That's a rare combination. Absolutely. He was truly a pioneer in exploring the frontiers of consciousness yeah. and its role in shaping reality. Yeah, absolutely. So if our listeners are as fascinated by this as we are, mm -hmm. where can they go to learn more about Dr. Tiller's work? Well, Dr. Tiller founded the Tiller Foundation, okay. which is dedicated to continuing his research and sharing his findings with the world. Right. You can find a wealth of information on your website, okay. including his books, articles, and even recordings of his lectures. Fantastic. Yeah, it's a great resource. And I think as we wrap up, it's important to acknowledge that this is all very new territory. Mm -hmm. You know, we need to approach these ideas with a healthy dose of discernment and caution. For sure. It's not about trying to control the world with our thoughts yeah. or anything like that. It's, a, it's more about expanding our awareness yeah. and understanding the profound potential we have to influence reality mm -hmm. through our intentions and actions. Well said. It's about recognizing that we're not just passive observers, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but active participants in this incredible dance of consciousness and creation. It's a beautiful way to put it. It's a beautiful dance. Yeah. So we've covered a lot of ground today. We have. Exploring Dr. Tiller's groundbreaking research on intention, consciousness, the interconnected nature of reality. Yeah, it's been a wild ride. We've talked about deltrons, conditioned spaces. Style body suits. The power of love and compassion to shape the world around us. All that good stuff. And for our listeners who are eager to dive deeper into these ideas. Yeah. We highly recommend checking out the Tiller Foundation website. Absolutely. There's a world of knowledge waiting to be explored. There is. And as always, we'd love to hear your thoughts and insights. Yeah, please. What resonated with you from this conversation? What are your biggest takeaways? The, how might these ideas inspire you to live more intentionally? Let us know in the comments below. Share your comments below. And don't forget to like and subscribe to The Deep Dive for more fascinating explorations into the mysteries of consciousness and the universe. We'll see you next time. Until next time, keep diving deep.